106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Happy first birthday to Babes Beer and Bitcoin. A little over a year ago, I quit my job. Right at a year ago, I started doing Beer, Babes, and Bitcoin, and I appreciate all of you guys tuning in today. This is a long one. Didn't mean for it to be. It just turned around, and I put a poll on the Telegram group. Do you want me to chop it up, or do you want me to post one long one? So I posted one long one. However, it is a celebration. It's longer because I've gone back and touched on some other ones that we've done over the past year. So if you're a new subscriber, and hey, welcome all you new subscribers. You don't have to necessarily go back and watch all of them. I got got some of the good ones here. Also, what we're going to do is we're going to have a giveaway. Going to give away three potentially five of the Babes Beer and Bitcoin t-shirt. They're all lady sizes. Got some bonus questions too. It's basically an Easter egg hunt. I'm going to leave some clues throughout the video and in the description down below are the questions. Just fill in the correct responses. And you'll be entered. We'll, we'll do a drawing for the free T-shirts. There are two bonus questions, two different tiered bonus questions, as well. We're going to go with the first answer. First person that responds to the bonus questions will win the bonus prizes. Really appreciate you guys. I know it's a little bit longer, but I think you'll have a good time. You guys take care. Also, I do do. I said doo doo. A portfolio update because some of you guys have been asking me. I don't know why, but okay, I, I, I put it together here for you. You guys take care, and again, happy first birthday, beer, babes, and Bitcoin. Babes, beer, and Bitcoin. What the hell did I call this thing? Babes, beer, and Bitcoin. <laughs> Y'all have fun. Well, like I said earlier, or maybe I didn't because I always do the uh, introduction talking part last. <laughs> and in case I forget to come back and, and say that, then this will be the first time you've heard it. But I get a lot of posts in the Telegram group or private messages and everything. Hey, Scotty, what do you think about this project what do you think about that project what what is this a good price to get in is it is this a good is this a good price to sell what should i do and you guys need to stop (laughs) seriously i ain't the guy i'm really not i ain't the guy to ask about certain projects and certainly not a ta guy and when i say you gotta stop I, i meant you gotta stop soliciting opinions of people that you don't know and making decisions what you're going to do with your money based on what a room full of strangers may or may not say so to illustrate the point <laughs> let me give you a little let me give you a little background a little history and some of you may know it some of you may not some of you may know some of it but let me kind of Well, at the very least, do a recap of the last 12 months, but I'll give you a little bit of history prior to that, just for background sake. But your strategy and my strategy may be completely different. This is not financial advice at all. Don't ever take financial advice from 
somebody you don't that you don't know whether it be on YouTube or especially in a Telegram group until that person has earned some trust in your eyes. But again, our goals are going to be different. We're different ages. We may or may not be playing with a different bankroll. Our real-life responsibilities are different. And so everybody's plan has got to be their plan. And I will tell you something that I learned from a previous boss is, hey, every now and then, take a time out. Do an evaluation of the last whatever time increment, the last month, the last quarter. But when I first got into crypto, Bitcoin was coming down from 20000 I got in at about 14000 thinking, oh, okay, well, it's already gone up. It's pulled back. Hey. Uh, and so I came in at fourteen, <laughs> And uh, then began some of the most painful <laughs> months of my life. And what do they say? Buy the dip. Okay, so I bought the dip. And it dropped a little bit more. And I bought the dip. And it dropped a little more. And I bought the dip. And finally, after I had bought the mother freaking dip so many times, all of a sudden I was at that point where you're not supposed to be. Right? What's that point? Do not invest more than you can afford to lose. Well, accumulatively... Over time, I had certainly reached that point. You. My God. We're wrong. Uh, this is an outrage. I demand an investigation. You can't sell our seats. A Duke has been sitting on this exchange since it was founded. We founded this exchange. It's ours. It belongs to us. My God. Mortimer, your brother's not well. We'd better call an ambulance. Fuck him. Now you listen to me. I want trading reopened right now. Get those brokers back in here. Turn those machines back on. Turn those machines back on. Now, I originally found Tyler's channel when Elastos was, what, $70, $80, $90 in that range. I, I uh, had found Elastos before I found Tyler, and then I found Tyler's group, and he was on my list of people that I used to listen to. <laughs> Uh, one by one, the other people started getting marked off the, the list of people that I would listen that I would listen to. But you know, if you ever been camping and you and you've built a campfire, everybody's got to have a a fuck stick, right? You, you got to have a fuck stick. Some people call it a poker. It's not a poker. It's a fuck stick. You, you take your little fuck stick and when oh here, let me come over here and and fuck around with the fire a little bit here. Let me let me stoke this and you know you know some people. With their trading, that's how they are. They constantly got that fuck stick and they're in there. Here, like, and I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's a fast food mentality. Maybe it's a lack of uh, an attention span. Maybe it's, um, I, I don't know. I, I certainly don't know. But at this point, and I don't remember exactly the date. I'm going to say spring two years ago. Tyler started talking about an impending Coinbase listing for 0x. Now, this was four to five months before the thing ever happened. If my time frame is off there, please forgive me, but it seemed like it was about four or five months, and it was certainly way before anybody else started even talking about it. And I threw some money at that. It was one of my first Tyler calls <laughs> that I ever did. And um, in the coming weeks, 0x went up, I want to say a buck and a quarter was when it was. And you'd have to look at the time frame to get the actual time frame. But this is, I mean, and if you, ever, if you were around during that time, I think it was a midweek where I live here in the U.S., late night live stream, which was cool. It was, you know, it was, it was different. Now, again, it may not have been. Maybe that's just when I was listening to it. But the best of my, I, I, I mean, I know it was at night when I was, when I was listening to it. 
And uh, I realized that this guy had had some game. Now, this was about the time uh, that Bitcoin was down at about 6000 for the first time, at least in this uh, span of time that we're talking about. And during, that, uh, during the next couple of weeks, I, I want to say that Bitcoin bounced up to like 11,000. And then I went on vacation <laughs> and went uh, up out to Yosemite National Park and Lake Tahoe, some of the most beautiful landscape you've ever seen in your life. And I wasn't near a computer for a couple of weeks. And I was fortunate to take some of those gains out at this point my goal and 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 again everybody's got their own opinion my opinion is and the way that i trade and again this is not financial advice this is just the way i do it i'm i'm older than most of you guys so i'm a little bit more conservative my initial intent on any play that i do is to get my initial investment out i was fortunate when Bitcoin was up about 11000 or so on, on, on that nice bounce, that first bounce, that I was able to cash out and uh, put some of that money out, where at least that not investing more than you can afford to lose pain uh, wasn't nearly as great as it was. And then Bitcoin dropped down to 6000 again. Now, this was about the time that... Tyler did a sponsored video on BetX. It was a gambling coin, but it was a masternode coin. And it was a sponsored review. And uh, I was doing some windshield time. I can't remember what year it was. I want to say two years ago, but maybe I'm wrong. I know it was in October because I know what was going on when it happened. But I uh, started... I had a lot of windshield time because I was working at a at a fair in my hometown. Had a lot of windshield time, and I kept listening to that video over and over and over. And, and for me, I, I'm not the guy you want to ask blockchain questions on. I'm not that guy. I'm not the guy you want to be asking TA questions on and price entry and this and that. I know what I like. I know what I think. My expertise really is watching people and predicting how people are going to respond. That comes from my sales experience. Actually, my mama, if it went through my mama's mind, it went through her mouth. My daddy had a lot more filters. <laughs> and his, his remarks were a lot more measured with those filters. I'm kind of a, a mixture between the two. <laughs> But for me, masternodes made sense because I was able to frame it in a part that made sense from my retail and my sales experience in the hotel business because it was all about sales per square foot. That was how I was able to construct it in my mind. And that's what worked really, really well for me. Well... I, I did the one that, that Tyler did a, a sponsored review for, and I like doubled my money. Now, at this point, I had one goal. Like I said, I'm going to get my initial investment out. So my money doubled. I took out my earnings on that, turned it into cash, brought it out. And then I went and found another Masternode project. And I found a system for vetting Masternode projects projects that were working really really well for me and then I was able to double my money and triple my money there for a while and everything I touched was it was at the exact right time now they <laughs> they say I'd rather be lucky than good there's also a saying that says the harder I work the luckier I get so somewhere in between there right but every move I was making was doubling or tripling. So I, boom, I'd, I'd exit. I took my profits and I kept pulling those out until finally 
my initial investment into crypto was paid off. So now everything on the table was play money. Now, where did I get the money to do the small cap master nodes? What I did, now they say it ain't a loss until you sell. And that's certainly a way to look at it. And I decided not to sit around and stare at the computer and hope that my project that I was invested in would do a 35x and get back up to where I bought it at this point. Because, uh, like I said, Bitcoin got down about 6000 And then, I, hell, there was a point there. I want to say it was like three weeks, it seemed. I don't think Bitcoin moved $100 either direction. Now, for those of y'all that were in the market, you know, we were all sitting around licking our wounds. It was like that scene in Jaws when they're all sitting around comparing scars. It's a bull shark. It scraped me when I was taking samples. I got something for you. That's the thresher. You see that? Chief Thresher's tail. Thresher? That's a shark. You want to drink? Drink to your leg? I'll drink to your leg. Okay, so we <laughs> drink our legs. <laughs> I got the creme de la creme. All right, here, hold on. Hey, see that? You're wearing a sweater. Right there, Mary Ellen Moffat. She broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided that I wasn't going to sit around and wait anymore. So that whole, it's not a loss till you sell it strategy kind of went out the door basically i lined everybody up against the wall neo get over there you get over there you get over there and instead of looking at the column where it said how much i was down i looked across the board and said how what are you worth right now what are you worth in dollars and cents and i got x amount of dollars and then that was the money that i played with in master notes I went ahead and took the hit, and there was a, a really good opportunity that what I was doing was, was stupid and that I'd be completely out of crypto <laughs> in a short amount of time. I got a buddy who, who plays some professional poker, and he has an expression that I kind of always use in sales also, and his expression was, all I need is a chip, a chair, and a chance. But like I said, I lined everybody up against the wall. Boom, that's, how much, that's your street value, if you will. And then I went and stood. That, that was how I got started in masternodes. Now again, this is about the time that Bitcoin was, six, was uh, at about 6,000 for the second or third time. Can't go below 6,000, everybody said. It'll never go below 6,000. But at this point, I didn't care. Now that I had my original investment out, now I can breathe. So I started doing these master, I, and I was just hitting my stride in this master node business. So boom, I would do the next one. It would jump up. I'd get out. Half my money I would throw into Bitcoin. Half my money I'd throw into Ethereum. Then I'd go do the next one. But that's all I did for a while, man. I, and I want to say I made 10, 12 plays in a row in that two and a half month span that um, I'd get in, I'd double my money. At the worst, I'd double my money. I'd take my proceeds, my profit, half of it into Bitcoin, half of it into Ethereum. And then, <laughs> Bitcoin goes down close to 3,000.
But my master nodes were still killing it. Matter of fact, it seemed like they were really killing it. I didn't have any new fiat I was going to bring in the game. I, I just got all my money off the table. Now I'm playing with house stakes. So what did I start doing? At when Bitcoin was under 4000 I'd take half my earnings and I'd throw it into Bitcoin and I'd take half my earnings and I'd throw, it in, throw them into Ethereum. Now, at about this time also was when Elastos fell off the, the face of the earth. And so then I started doing uh, um, 50% Bitcoin and Ethereum and 50% Elastos. And I just kept throwing it and throwing it and throwing it. Um, and even though my initial purchases into Elastos were at $90, by doing this process, I was able to lower my down, I was able to down cost average my price so low that when Elastos was on the way down, so somewhere between five and twelve dollars, I was able to sell out of Elastos and I, okay, that 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 sin is gone. I still love the project and I'll probably go back in. Looks like it had some good news yesterday with the uh, coin burn. And of course it's two X from what it was just a couple of weeks ago. But it's still <laughs> a long way from, from where I made my first uh, purchases. But that's all I kept doing. Man. I was the fuck stick. I wasn't using the fuck stick. I was the fuck stick. Also about this time is when Tyler asked me, hey, you ought to put some videos together on what you're doing there on how to make money in a, in a bear market because it's, it's a niche that, that nobody's doing right now and so that was when i started doing videos now some of y'all that have been with me since then uh hey those were shot with my iphone and posted with absolutely no editing whatsoever <laughs> and i appreciate it. i've taken down a lot of those uh mainly because I, I like to focus when i was doing master nodes more on the vetting process and, and explaining the how I decide what projects to go into instead of this is a project you ought to go into. I, I, I'm more on the learning thing. And actually, I was fortunate because I took that while the market was down, I was doing that. But I was also learning. And, and we did a video on how to build a master node on a VPS. So uh, I actually, I'd never known or understood linux and so it was kind of cool who says you can't teach a an old dog new tricks it was kind of cool learning those learning those new tricks but the more i learned about it what was going on i and, and i and i already had a lot of money out uh i took a couple of hits on a couple of bad plays and it made me feel really bad because a couple of people by this point even though it was not financial advice, were following my plays and they lost some money. Um, and it just it just knocked a hole in my heart. So I stopped. I, I made sure that I stopped absolutely talking about what I was doing. But then the more that I found out, even though master nodes, the small cap master nodes, as I've always said, are like the strip clubs in crypto. Crypto is risky. Matt, small cap masternodes are like a, a completely different world altogether. And so I stopped doing those. Obviously, I stopped doing videos on that. About a year ago, I left my employer. We had an issue over morality and ethics. They thought, hey, these are our rules, and we got a sign in the back room. And I thought, hey, why don't we actually live what we're talking about instead of having a sign in the back room and then doing whatever the freak we wanted to? Why don't we actually live our lives by those words that are on that sign in the back room? That's the honorable thing to do, right? That's what our mom has told us. That's what our daddy's told us. And after a while of dealing with it internally, was when Chainlink took off. And I found myself with a little 
financial freedom because Tyler put us on the chain link when it was at 40 cents. And now about this point, it was over $4. So I was able to have a little financial elbow room. So I didn't have the kids in the house anymore. They had all grown up and moved out. So I was able to take a little bit more risk. And walk the talk. You can't sit there and say, hey, this is what I stand for. And then continue to just duck and take it every time I go into work. So I had all these plans. Uh, one night an idea came to me. Hey, I got an idea. After I did a little knockoff video of the movie Platoon. That hole ain't gonna dig itself. Come on, boy. Get your dick skin on that thing. Dig. You can get all day. Dig, dig. Somebody once wrote that hell is the impossibility of reason. That's what this place feels like. I hate it already, and it's only been a week, Grandma. Some week. The hardest thing I've ever done is to go on point three times so far this week. I don't even know what I'm doing. A shit coiner could be standing three feet in front of me, and I wouldn't know it. I'm so tired. We get up at 5 a.m., hump all day, camp around 4 or 5 p.m., dig foxhole, check block folio, eat, and then pull an all-night data crunch and blocking crypto zombie suggestions that pop up on YouTube. It's scary because nobody tells me how to do anything because I'm new and nobody cares about the new guys. They don't even want to know your name. The unwritten rule is the new guy's life isn't worth as much because he hasn't put in his time yet. And they say if you're going to get wrecked in crypto, it's better to get it in the first few weeks. The logic being, you don't suffer that much. I can believe that. If you're lucky, you get to see some green at night and then pull a three-hour admin shift in the Telegram group. So maybe you sleep three or four hours a night. But you don't really sleep. I don't think I can keep this up for a year, Grandma. I think I've made a big mistake in coming here. I got an idea over what I would like to do now that I had some free time. Now, at this point, I wasn't retired. It's just I'd worked damn near every day since I was 19 for 38 years. And... Um, I didn't want to end up like what happened to my dad. My dad had all these plans. He did everything perfect. First man, first, <clears throat> first person ever in the family to go to college, graduated, served time in the military, came out, got a job, retired after 38 years with the company. And then when he retired, my mother's mother ended up moving into the house because she had bad health. And then by the time that she passed away, then my daddy's health went to hell. So he didn't get to do a lot of the things that he wanted to do. And knowing my family's history, I said, well, I'm not going to let that happen to me. So I decided, you know what? I don't know what I'm going to do right now, but work ain't one of them. I'm going to do some things that I wanted to do. And about this time is when my buddy, who was renting a room from me, moved up to Ohio to be near his parents uh, as his parents are getting to the um, point where my parents were and I told him you, you're crazy if you don't go um, you're not leaving me in a hole but um, hey, ain't no dollar amount in the world I wouldn't pay to be able to sit down and talk to my parents one more time to go are you fucking gonna hate yourself for the rest of your life if you don't if you don't do that so decided I was gonna rent one of my rooms to help offset some of the cost <laughs> and that was when a young lady closer to the age of my daughter, about half my age, um, moved in to rent a room from me. Sweet gal, loved, loved her to death. We were non-sexual soulmates from the get-go and, and until this day. Her name is Skye, and I l absolutely love her to death. She's out in Oregon right now. Hey, Skye, your voice... Mailbox is full. If you watch this, and I know you watch mine, if you watch this, give me a call. Damn it, I want to talk to you. I'm hungry to hear from you. <laughs> but I had a list of things I wanted to do. No bucket list stuff, but some stuff that, as a single father, 
I either didn't have the time or I didn't have the money to go and do some of these things. So when the kids moved out, uh, I decided these were some things that I that I wanted to do. I, um, and so I, I laid out this plan and then um, then all of a sudden things started falling into line. And I had this idea with what I wanted to do. I had this brand new camera, which which I absolutely love. And I had all these plans that I wanted to do. Uh, you know, we were going to be on this Bitcoin adoption platoon. Going to go to these football games. Going to go to this tourist place. Going to go to some places that are near and dear to me. Going to go see my Houston Astros, who I've been a fan of them since, what, six years old? Never been to that stadium at all. And go and visit some very special people that live in these areas because I haven't seen them since back in college. Get it. Keep on rolling. Keep on rolling. Ooh. So if you're tired of the same old oh, oh, story, let right. it turn some pages. Now we heal when you are ready. Roll the chair. this plan had this plan i want to do this i want to do this i want to do this and um this is what i want the video to be about and you know we were gonna uh, this whole everywhere we went we were gonna try to buy things with bitcoin and and uh or talk to people about bitcoin or talk to waitresses about bitcoin and i did some of those and they were fun <laughs> I did. <laughs> if I hadn't, I'd have like grabbed it and run, right? Anything else? No, nope, no, no, no. All right, you take Bitcoin? Uh, no? No. All right. See, so, yeah, we know you don't. <laughs> Next time? All right. Here's a question. How many, how many gas pumps y'all got here? 120 gas pumps. That's ridiculous. That's crazy. Did you want to no, baby, I appreciate it. You do the same. Thank you. Thank y'all for sharing Thank part of your day. Yeah, hey, I'm doing a project, so I got to ask you, and if it's okay, I'm going to do it on camera. Y'all take Bitcoin? Do I do what? Do y'all take Bitcoin for payment? No. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Hi. Hi. What can I get started for you? Well, let me ask you a question. What's the thing that like you brag about the most that y'all serve here? Um, honestly, the soup. Soup. Yeah, and it's surprising, but I love it's a uh, white chicken chili, so it's like creamy. It's chicken, black beans, corn. It's really, really good. All right. I love the soup. So they have we have like the bigger bowl for like six dollars. Um, but also if you do a, our combo right here, you get a half a sandwich and you can get it with a cup of soup. All right. So let me do that. You want to do that? All right. What kind of sandwich do you want to do? We have um, ham, turkey, or chicken. Uh, chicken salad. salad. Okay. And then for your bread, you want wheat, white, or hoagie? Hoagie. Hoagie, all right. Put me on the spot. <laughs> and then, uh, what kind of cheese can I get for you on that? We have provolone, Swiss, American, doing? or cheddar. I'm doing chicken salad. Uh, American. Okay. American, you got it. 
And you're gonna do that with the soup, correct? Yes, we. You want that toasted? Please. Yes, sir. All right. And then to drink for you? Um, I can do the strawberry limeade. Sure. You want a small or large? Ah, uh, let's do a large. Got it's it. hot out. Yes, it is. <laughs> and then can I get a name for your order? Uh, sure, Scott. Uh, Scott. All right, Mr. Scott, I have you down for the lunch special, the half a sandwich, the chicken salad on a hoagie toasted with American cheese and a soup. Very cool. Got it. All right, so we $15.64. All right. Now you take Bitcoin? Pardon? You take Bitcoin? Nope. No? All right. <laughs> Not there yet. <laughs> Not there yet. All right. Almost. We got to wait. <laughs> cool enough. All right, so you have a choice. You've been a wonderful waitress, absolutely sweet. Beautiful, all awesome. that good stuff. So I'm gonna let me raise this so I'm not like doing your boobs. <laughs> Perfect, no worries. All right, so I'm typically a very good tipper, always a great tipper. So I'm gonna give you the option. Do you want me to tip you in regular like most people do? Or I can double that and pay you in Bitcoin. What would you prefer? Um Maybe, I don't, just regular, because I'm not sure how Bitcoin works. That's cool. That's fine. So anyway, I'm doing something during a couple of my different visits, and uh, one of the topics for stuff we're going to talk about, people, you you freaking own. So oh, okay. first of all, I give you that, and oh, guess cool. which guess which section you, you own. What is that? Well, look at the shirt. See if you can tell which part you own. Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. I'm going to go ahead and say I got the first two. Okay, so. <laughs> That's there you so go. Awesome. Thank you so much. No, no, no. Cool. Thank you. So here's, 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 you've been asking us questions all night. So here's a question for you Do you want your tip like regular people or do you want your tip in Bitcoin? Um, oh, geez. That's a great question. Regular? I, I don't no, know. no, no, that's cool. But it's since she gave it such thought, we'll do both. Yeah. I well, my um, my boyfriend did. Uh, he had some Bitcoin a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um, I think he ended up selling it though, so he doesn't. Ha he has. There's a there's a different one. I can't. I is it called IOTA? Yeah. But the other one, he's got. That's one. He's got some of that. I think I don't remember, but. All right, well then, so he's into it, so he'll be able yeah, to... Yeah, he definitely knows a lot more than I do about it. <laughs> All right, so let me see that pin for a second. Let me see which one I'm giving you. It's not funded yet, but I'll send it to you. Is this a, an organization that you're a part of? No. Are you Scotty P or is I am. Scotty P. <laughs> <laughs> so here's... This is for you. It's not funded yet. I'll get it when I get back to my Airbnb tonight. Cool. But that's for you. Wow, that's a paper. You. That's a paper wallet, and it's going to have some Bitcoin in it for you. Thank you. Wow. No, no, no. Thank you. No, and, this is so cool. And uh, this is well, that's number and such. But that is my Twitter. Okay. And when I get it all put together, I'll post the YouTube video on there. Cool. And uh, you can go and see you a little bit. Yeah. I'll cut any branding stuff out and everything. That's so awesome. Cool. Thank All right. you so much. No, no, no. Thank you. Wow, but... this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the highlight of my day right there. That's the most interesting thing that's, that's happened today. But what I kept telling Skylar was, hey, you know what? I, I really want to be able to put this together, but I want there to be an underlying message and she said well what kind of underlying message i said i don't know yet i don't want to force it i want it to be real i want it to be spontaneous i want it to be natural and i said it'll present itself when it does well actually it did present itself <laughs> it did present itself um and a lot of the plans on what i wanted to do when i went to some of these places kind of um, didn't even take a back seat. They took a seat in the trailer behind the, the truck because the hidden message, the underlying message, the important message was to make sure that you spend time and that you talk with people that you love and stay as close as you can to them. 
it first became very apparent the very first stop, which was in San Antonio with my old college roommate, Gary. All right, so back up again. What was that you said about? Okay, so this is called the Sporting District. Now, if you um, did not shave because you didn't need to this morning, by the time that you walk into this place and walk all the way around it, you will need to shave because of all of the masculinity and testosterone that will be injected. All the in, uh, testosterone that will be injected into your system. Okay, so, of here. so I want to I want to double check. I make sure. Are you saying that shit inside here is so pansy? I'm going to feel like a motherfucking no, man, or shit in here is so manly that I'm going to? It's going to raise my manliness. This is for the refined okay. gentleman. Gotcha. So that's why I think that you need to be uh, a person that sees it. Damn. <laughs> I don't know if that was an insult or... <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I think it's going to be okay right here. Well, okay. actually, here, I'm putting it over here with this pretty okay. girl. It gives me a reason to talk to her. No responsibility whatsoever, but while we go in here, can I put this here? Because it looks like it's being... <laughs> Thank you so much. And Sky went with me on this trip, and we had we had a damn good time. We toured this one, what used to be a brewery, but and it's a historic building. And a company came in and bought it and preserved it and turned the entire thing into, well, hell, I can't even put it into words, but it's absolutely ridiculous. It used to be the Pearl Beer Brewery, and now the whole area is just the Pearl. I mean, the restaurants, I mean, everything, everything that you see in there is was a working piece of the brewery like there were chandeliers that were made out of these big gears the booths in the restaurant were actually carved out in the metal the inside the booth what what used to be a vat this huge vat so all these different seating uh, private dining mirages throughout the uh, throughout the restaurant all used to be vats. I mean, the whole place is cool. I mean, even the water, even the waterworks that, that they had going, it, it was just a really neat thing. But then we turned around and all the time was gone. And you know what? We didn't get to really go and film and talk to strangers like we wanted to, but that was okay because, well, I, I got to rekindle an old friendship with my buddy Gary and got to bring in a new friend to meet somebody that was so special to me back in college and even more so today. This over here is the stables, which is where they kept the horses. Now it's a lecture, um, a lecture facility. Huh. What else can you give us? Yeah. <laughs> Starting the tour? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is this your first time here? Yes. This place, I mean, like, if you just look around at, um, you know, like, first of all, I think the building was part of the ADT. What they did architecturally, the very good exposed and, and uh, stuff that they did is just, you know, phenomenal. Yeah, so as I walk in, I think this is awesome. Oh, yeah. Right. Or, you know, for a pretty good price, you could tag along with us. <laughs> <laughs> We we'll give you we we'll give you a good rate. <laughs> All right, so I got it's Hudson and Peyton, right? Yes. All right, so here's something. This is the website you can look it up. It's called Bitcoin Savings Calculator, and I just did this like if if, if starting last January, if you put in twenty bucks a week, right now you would put in this much. Your value in U.S. dollars would be this, but more importantly, you have about a quarter of a Bitcoin right now. Right? And again, what's that number going to be in the future? I don't know. I right. think more. I think more. But hey, let's fuck it like that, right? Yeah. This is one for each of them. All right? Okay. Now this, again, I don't have to fund it yet. I'm going to fix it. This is also both for them. I'm going to, I'm going to, this is a paper wallet. And what you're going to do, now this is, this is the public key. That's okay to share. This is the private key. That's not cool to share. So this would be like your bank account. Okay. This would be like your PIN number. Okay. Now I'm gonna, when I do this video, I'm gonna put in directions on how to do a sweep. So if they keep this, they can keep it here for five years, 10 years, whatever, it'll be safe. It'll be, 
Now, right now, I have the private key because I want to make sure that people can get it out. However, don't be giving this to anybody to send Bitcoin to. Yeah. Because technically, I still have the. You don't trust anybody, even if you trust them. I'm only going to keep this until we, you guys can get that out of there. Uh, but anyway, this this is for both of them. I'm just gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna put some Bitcoin in there. Okay. For each of them. All right. Wow. <laughs> Today on. It's not gonna be a lot, but it's gonna be a little bit, but they they they're gonna own some Bitcoin. <laughs> exactly. That's what's gonna cool about. Yeah. So I'm gonna be the cool one. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, brother. Thank you. Appreciate your time, brother. Okay. The following week went down to College Station to go see my my favorite college football team, the Texas Aggies play. Now here in Texas. No extended road trip is complete without a stop at a Bucky. It's a whole different world. No, come here. You, <laughs> you can't make an entrance like that in my life. Now, in, in this particular Bucky's, there was a neat thing that happened. I was kind of walking around taking some footage. And then when I was done shopping, I went up to the uh, cashier. And while I was sitting there in line, you, you could see... Man, she she was great with the customers that she was dealing with. But as soon as like each transaction was done, you could see that something was weighing heavy on her heart. I don't know what it was, but there was a 50-50 chance that she was going to be my cashier. So I actually closed the camera, took it off, put it in my bag. And, and it actually did turn out to be her that was my cashier. And we joked and, and played around a little bit. And as she was checking me out, <laughs> now, checking me out as in taking my money for the items that that I purchased not check checking me out like hey not like that at all but it, it um at the end of the transaction she kind of put her hand on top of my hand and she goes thank you so much you don't know what a difference that that you just made in my life and to me, that meant a lot. So that was working in my head. I went to my first yell practice, which is a fun, a, a fun thing there at Texas A&M. But and then went to the game. However, before the game, um, I was there with a, well, I was there with Bubba and his nephew, and we ran into a great bartender named Heather. Now, the best conversation with Heather, well, damn it, the uh, camera wasn't working. <laughs> it just wasn't working. and uh, But it was still a great conversation. But what an incredible spirit. Your charm may have stolen us from more comfortable seating. But <laughs> I meant that as a compliment. See, I have, like, you know, so much going on up here, so I could use the companies. Yeah. You'll probably get better and quicker service up here. Don't yeah. tell anybody else yeah. I said that. All right. Right. So. Fair enough. <laughs> so y'all don't do the prime rib before four? Um, yes. All right, so what would you recommend? Uh, do not let my big mouth get in the way of taking care of other customers, okay? No, no it's okay. I was just dying away. No, I mean, I'm just, I get in that, and I forget. So. I do that too. <laughs> Are you craving any type of particular food? Well, the prime rib, but you just tell me that. <laughs> Prime ribs are ready. Oh, get out just of Just kidding. Town. We have prime ribs now, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 just for you. <laughs> You're not taunting me. I'm fine. I heard you guys say something about it. I was like, oh, I should go see the rest of you. Well, we were thinking, hey, it's game day. Well, they're not really ready Saturday morning about noon anyway, so. Should be ready by hey. Alright. Well you're you're my like second favorite new person. <laughs> I'll take second. <laughs> I'll be right back. So I won't have to cry. <laughs> no crying. Prime rib is now on the on the menu. There's no crying on game day. There's no crying on game day. Okay, well let's settle that one. There you go, brother. Shit always works out, man. 
Yeah, I lose twenty dollars, I find twenty dollars. Only for <laughs> You're even steaming. <laughs> When do you, I mean, you got the ring, so when do you officially graduate? Uh, Assuming that you don't flunk out your senior year. Yeah, if, if things go according to plan, it'll be December 24th. December 24th. Oh, okay, next year. We'll go next year. Uh, you graduate 24th. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Are you guys going to stay up here? I've got real comfortable. Yeah. I will. Like I said, your charm stole us from the more comfortable seats. Do <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys want to start with any snacks or anything? Are you pretty much ready to go? I think it's game time. Oh, yeah. but are you vegan now as well? No. Come to a dead cow place, so I'm just checking. No, yeah. Uh, girlfriend hasn't converted here. <laughs> They're like vampires, man. So, like, garlic works well. <laughs> Keeps those vegans away. It's actually the opposite. They love garlic. They love garlic. All right. <laughs> get, get a raw piece of meat hanging around your there neck. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a little chicken leg. <laughs> right, there you go. Well, he spoke about your prime rib the same way that you spoke about the cone of beer, so... Is that what you're going to have, the prime rib? Okay. I think we are. And what kind of dressing would you like for your starter salad? Oh, my God. <laughs> I know. I got so many options thrown at you. I thought I was done with the decision making. <laughs> so you can do a, a house salad. Uh, you can do a Caesar salad, mozzarella tomato salad, wedge salad. Pan fry, deep fry, stir fry. There's pineapple shrimp. Lemon shrimp, coconut shrimp, pepper salad, shrimp. Wedge salad. Texas A&M University. That, that's where my daddy graduated. That, even though I did not go to school there, the, they are number one in my heart just because, well, like I said, it's where my daddy went to school and I grew up learning about football with him watching or listening uh, to Texas Aggie football. They were never really a great team for an extended period of time up until the 90s and then again recently. But um, hey, if your team sucks and you're still a fan, then you're a fan. <laughs> and then there was the football game itself. <laughs>
Bring it in. Good block by the big man. Touchdown. at a Texas A&M football game, you do not go to the concession stand. You do not go to the bathroom because at halftime, that's when the Fighting Texas Aggie band takes the field. And it's really good if you've got a seat somewhere in the middle of the field up high and you can look down and see them doing their military-style marching while they're playing. It is unbelievable. <laughs> So then the following weekend, I'm going to Houston to meet up with another buddy and his wife, who's also my buddy, two of my favorite people in the world. We're going to a ball game one night, and we're going to a concert the following night. Peter Frampton was the headliner, grew up on him, and evidently he has come down with some affliction which affects muscle control. And, and his life's not going to be shortened any by this disease, but he's not going to be able to do the things that he wants to do physically. And he wanted to go out on his own terms. And damn, I respect that. The warm-up band was a Zeppelin tribute band led by Led Zeppelin's drummer's son. The drummer is the one who died of an overdose. It was... A hellacious weekend. But just check out these seats. Best seats I have ever had. Plus, it's 
the, the roof is closed, the air conditioner is on. Everything's comfortable. Beer's brought to the table. Happy time. Happy time. You want to go for a walk? We really need someone. Are we allowed to? Yeah, we're allowed to take a drink. I mean, I know it's all commercialized and everything, but it's still, it's, it's magic to me. I love it. I love it too. It is. And some people complain about the, you know, the old uh, traditional ballparks that have been around for a long time. Oh. I, and, and I love them. But that last, I think, when I saw y'all up there, we went to a ball game when the Orioles were still playing in Memorial. Yeah. Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah. I was living here in Houston at that time, and y'all were, uh, y'all were up there in Germantown? Yeah, Germantown. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And we, and the Nats weren't there. We didn't have the No, Nats, no, no. So we had the Orioles, the Orioles fans, yeah. It was the Orioles the year before they started playing in Camden. Yeah. that's on the field yeah, right now. There we go. All right. <laughs> I guarantee you he got hired because he looks like him. Yeah. The dude's five foot nothing. <laughs> he's uh, he's ridiculous. See, see, now the, the Astros can go like back to back to back to back. Oh, yeah, they got bombers at every spot. Michael Brandt is a freaking incredible hitter. Yes, he is. Best ever. He's more of a line driver, but every time I watch lately, he's hitting home runs. Yeah, he hits balls. These seats are just horrible, man. I mean. Nobody in front of me except this wall.
come to playoffs. That's what I'm saying. Yes, please. And I'm ready. Those little addictive bread thingies. You want one more? I think I want one more. Okay. Actually. Here's the Bud Light. Uh, Do you need one? Hoppadillo. You ready? Yes, please. This guy doesn't break in half when he sneezes. I know, man. He's very fragile. Yeah, he is. That's a shame that Trout's out. He'd be like right here. We could be yeah, yelling at him all night long. He'd be heckling his ass. <laughs> a few years ago, I feel like he passed through DC. All right. I was a Nationals fan for a number of years. We lived there for six. And man, we went to some incredible games at Nationals Park. Really good. It's funny, they, Penny was just telling me that. I turned her into a baseball fan there. Oh, 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 get out! Go, 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 go! so poor they didn't know they were poor yeah you know my my grandmother picked cotton at 14 yeah oh yeah <laughs> but anyway what my mama used to always say when things were good she'd always go i wonder what the poor people are doing <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel right now man <laughs> sitting here at a baseball game they're bringing this fucking <laughs> <laughs> All the food we can eat. Yeah, you hit him? Piping hot food. Yeah. So is that what they did basically? It's a chocolate chip cookie done like a Chicago deep fish pizza? Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs>
that was probably my favorite editing thing that I've that I'd ever done right there to that point with this new software editing thing. I was really happy with how that turned. Here, let me show you that again. It's kind of cool.
every now and then you got to reevaluate what's going on. I was reevaluating my channel at this particular time, but the overriding message, that underlying message that I said that I was looking for was becoming really clear to me at this point. A, like I said earlier, absolutely stay in touch and spend time with those people that you love. B, or two. Did I start out with A or one? <laughs> I don't remember, and I'm not stopping now. I'm going for it. Make sure that you live life. Make sure that you live life. And looking back now a year later with this COVID added to the situation, boy, I'm glad I went to the ball games when I did. Boy, I'm glad that I went and visited with my friends and spent time with them when I, when I did. Not because, oh my God, they're past now. They're fine. I just talked to them, all of them, earlier this week. But I wouldn't have been able to do any of the things. If, if I would have waited till this year, wouldn't have been able to do any of those things. So remember to live life. That's been the overriding message of all my videos for the last year. Have fun, live life. Make money, but have fun. And in the last year, with the strategy that, that, I've, been, that I've been doing, and again, I, I'm not the guy you ask trading advice for. The way I do things is differently. Like I said, for me, I want to get my initial investment out. Don't ever get into something unless you have an exit plan. Let me say that again. Don't ever get into something unless you have an exit plan. And what I'm doing right now is I'm still doing my Bitcoin and my Ethereum, but now I've added some of those other wallets. So like, for instance, if Tyler makes a, a, a particular introduction to a project, again, his goals and my goals are different. I'm not working right now at all. So I want to build up my HODL wallets. And I want to line up stuff so I can start taking money out. So what is your goal? Let's say that your goal is I want to make $100,000 a year. Okay. Now, not necessarily with the prices of each project going up. That's the cherry on top, right? If your goal was $100,000 a year, and that means that you need to make $274 a day on the average. Again, I'm not talking about the value of a coin going up. That's the, that's the cherry on top. I'm talking about generating new money without putting any more fiat in. So what I've been doing is this. I've got my, I've got my HODL wallets. And I've got my trading account. A trading account is the fund money. That's how I'm going to fill all the other bags. We'll call her Stella. Stella is my trading account. If Tyler on a live stream or another video or in the chat room says, hey, y'all look at whatever coin. I've got Stella here. And I decide what percentage of Stella that I'm going to throw at that if I'm going to throw at that. And because I'm going into it, based on what I said a second ago, I also have what? An exit plan. For me, the first goal is to get my initial investment out. So however I do that, at, at this much gains, I'm going to take out this percent. At this much gains, I'm going to take out this percent. And at this much gains, I'm going to take out this percent. Take out my initial investment, maybe maybe a decent sized profit. And what I'm getting better at now is leaving a footprint there in that project. Wasn't always that good at that. Matter of fact, because I've done the same thing that you guys have done. I've jumped in, I've jumped out. And I'm getting my goal now is to leave a bigger footprint in some of these projects when I do that. So like when you ever go to a job interview, I'd hate this. If if you're in a position where you hire people and you ask this question, stop asking this question. It is the dumbest, stupidest, most pointless question that there has ever been in an interview. And it is, 
Where do you see yourself in five years? Really? I don't know. What I do know when I look back, that some of the biggest chances I took and some of the best rewards for some of the chances that I took were because I did not have blinders on. That while I am here, I am doing this. I don't have blinders on, so I'm not tunnel visioned onto one thing. I've got the whole field in play. So don't ask me where I see myself in five years. I don't know. Five years ago, I wouldn't have said sitting here talking to you today. <laughs> so you do what feels comfortable for you. Because I will tell you a question that somebody who has more in the market than they should, that whole don't risk more than you can afford to lose. Anybody that you see constantly asking, should I sell at this price? Should I buy at this price? I'm sorry, not the buy at this price. Should I sell at this price? Or when they're constantly, and it's usually one or two coins, but oh my God, so-and-so dropped 10%. Oh my God, it dropped 12%. And oh, hallelujah, it jumped 20%. You're, you're, you've you either invested too much or you're just way too emotionally attached <laughs> to that project. You need to stop doing that. Oh, and here's the moral of that story. For the last year, in playing it very conservative, like I'm showing you here. Now, your strategy has to be your strategy. But by knowing my exit points, leaving a footprint there now. <laughs> I wasn't real good at that before. Leaving a good footprint there. Continuing to use my HODL wallets. And bringing some out to the real world when I needed to. My portfolio is up 950% to the day of where it was last year. So by 38 Special sang a song back when I was in high school called Hold On Loosely, Don't Let Go. If you cling too tightly, you're going to lose control. I will tell you that for the last year, again, to the day, by cryptoing less, even though I'm in the chat, I'm not always in the chat, but I may have it open and doing other stuff, but by holding the steering wheel less tightly, my portfolio has jumped 950% in the last year. And the majority of that is not necessarily because one of my holdings jumped X and Y percentage. That had a big part of it. <laughs> but a lot of those I don't hold anymore. I wish I did. But I don't hold them anymore. As a matter of fact, I, some people have asked. So here it is. And people have asked me what my portfolio breakdown is. Pretty simple. Bitcoin is 45% of my holdings. Ethereum is 26% of my holdings. Energy Web Token. Thank you, Tyler, for the heads up in the Telegram group the night before your video. Oh, special note, if you're not hanging out in the Telegram group, you're going to miss some early calls. I don't get early calls just because I'm an admin, in case any of you are ever wondering. I get the information the same time that you do. But when Tyler pops in at 2 o'clock in the morning into the Telegram group and drops a breadcrumb, yeah, if you're not doing that, you're missing out. Uh, so anyway, EYT, especially um, due to two things. Number one, the price jump. Thank you again, Tyler. And number two, the arbitraging that I did by adding free ones. Thank you again, Tyler. <laughs> uh, it's at 13% of my portfolio. Kanex is 3%. Kusama is 3%. Link is 6%. And U.S. dollars that are still in my trading account in fiat, not in a, a, a uh, stable coin. 4%. 
and then just a basket oh shit everything that's left one percent that's that's my holdings but you set up what your piggy banks are going to be you set up what's good for you when you sell don't necessarily go all in or all out at the same time if you want if you're wondering if a price is at a good price but you don't you're afraid it might go up or down just throw a little bit at it like i said i'm, I'm not a ta guy i'm not a trading guy i'm not a crypto guy i'm a let's sit back and watch what's going on you know let me show you how to maybe at least have the right mindset if you're going to be in this world so that you don't go crazy or maybe just so that you don't do really stupid stuff and and put yourself in an awkward position that ends up hurting you well i have no idea how long this is but i think i'm going to end it right here i appreciate you guys tuning in i look forward to this next year <laughs>